Okay, so I'm getting ready to watch Attack on Titan Season 4, The Final Season, Episode 2. And Episode 1 really came at me fast. It was like nonstop, just boom, boom, boom. Just this long whole episode was this protracted battle. It was very disorienting being dropped down in the middle of that, which is kind of cool because I would imagine it's actually pretty disorienting to be in the middle of a hot, fierce battle like that. I mean, I've never personally been in any battle more extreme than perhaps a very heated snowball fight or something, but I would imagine that feeling of being disoriented is probably part of that feeling of battle. I don't know if there was a time jump or what. I didn't even know who they were fighting against. Like, I thought they were fighting against what was left of the people on Parody, but I don't think that was the case as the episode went on. That became more and more clear to me, though I probably should have figured that out way earlier than I did. I still don't know if there's been a time jump or something. I don't know quite what's going on. Looks like Emir was fed to someone else who knew who now has her Titan shifting abilities. And sadly, I guess that happened off screen. Like I don't even get to see the end of Amir's story unless we see it in flashback at some point this season. But it's definitely got me super curious to see what's going on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start this next episode. And they talk about four years wasted. So I don't know if this is four years in the future. And of course, they're talking about Zeke and uh, Reiner nearly shredded in that attack. And they're talking about how modern weapons are starting to make the old fashioned way of fighting with Titans obsolete, perhaps. Yeah, this guy, whoever he is, is a little dissatisfied at the cost of victory. You know, maybe thinking of it as a pyrrhic victory because their losses were so high. But yes, talking to, again, another theme coming up is that human ingenuity surpassed the powers of Titans. And uh, I guess Marley has relied pretty heavily on their seven Titan shifters, which is funny because they wanted to free people from Titans or something maybe when they fought against the original bloodline, the Eldians in the first place. But still, you gotta love the hypocrisy in uh, politics, right? Oh, and they're talking about advancing aircraft's gonna lead to bombing. And when that happens, the Titans are gonna be defenseless. So what I'm hearing here is maybe they're sort of foreshadowing that human military is gonna to get to the point where they attack the uh, civilization on Paradis with conventional weapons and they're not so afraid of the possibility of having all the Titans brought forth from the walls. Yeah, Marley had the distinction of being the ones to defeat the Eldians and now they're barely holding on to their leadership role on the world as a superpower. Zeke the Wonder Boy is what they're calling Zeke. I don't know if you've noticed this, but Zeke, especially standing here with his beard and his hair trimmed a little bit, looks kind of like uh, Ervin's father, doesn't he? Like the school teacher. Maybe he is the school teacher and there's some weird time travel involved. And he went back in time and became Grisha's son. Oh, so he's telling uh, that the world needs to see Marley occupies parody and wields the power of all Titans. They've really, really got to get that founding Titan power if they want to dominate the world militarily is what he's talking about. Oh, yeah, because no one can take the power of the Beast Titan unless they're from Zeke's bloodline. I'm kind of curious why they didn't like mandate Zeke to have a child to take over his role as the Beast Titan when his 13 years were up. Oh, uh, but he wants to, to bring it in to his father. He wants to be the son to stop the father. And here comes that ominous OP music again. It, it's frightening stuff. So I'll just take a minute here during the OP to let everybody know once again that I do have a Patreon now. If you think you might be interested in going and checking out that Patreon, there's a link down in the video description. If you're watching this video on Patreon, thank you. You rock. Still can't get over all the destruction in that OP. Just like bomb after bomb after bomb just going off and wiping things out. So many, so many dead folks in this OP. And it looks like the Attack Titan leading the wave of destruction there. Midnight Train is the name of this episode. So I'm curious to see what that's all about. All right, somebody lighting a cigarette. Is that Zeke? 
Oh, so I guess Colt is the one who's going to take over for uh, Zeke when his 13 years is up. And I guess Colt's impressed because Zeke's an Eldian who gets to talk to the Marleyan brass or whatever you want to call it. Oh, so Zeke doesn't let other people know he has royal blood or maybe Zeke doesn't know who his mother was. I know that the owl wanted to keep that a secret. So interesting. That might be why Zeke wasn't required to procreate because he's kept that a secret that he's from that Fritz bloodline. <laughs> tell him he's going to inherit his memories and hopes he doesn't tell anybody how he uh, cleans himself after taking a number two. <laughs> oh, this guy, even somebody as important as Zeke doesn't uh, get privacy when a Marleyan's around. So Zeke talking about conquering parody in a year. So I'm thinking this might be before Reiner. No, it can't be because Reiner was an adult. So they're going to go back. They've already failed to take over parody and now they want to go back. And I guess they got ran out of town three to four years ago, the way everything's talking here. Oh, so he's saying that at least two Titans had to sink all those ships that they sent to Paradis. Oh, I like this. I like this. So apparently there has been some kind of scuffle between Aaron and company and the uh, Marleans. So it looks like they took out a whole bunch of... Uh, ships that were there they kept them from escaping so maybe they're like sending marley a signal stay away from here oh wow and reiner's waking up with like flashbacks to how he got defeated there in shiganshin at the end of season three. Oh, and that's gallard the one who's taken over uh the jaw titan and he's thanking gallard for helping him out oh wow Gayard's wishing he had gotten the power of the uh, Armored Titan instead of... <laughs> oh, so Gayard is Marcel's member brother. So it's kind of cool that he got Marcel's Titan back in a roundabout way from Amir. Oh, wow. He uh, apparently thinks Amir's pitiful. Oh, wow. It looked like Amir was pretty much defeated there, too. Like, she had no will to live going on when she was taken. <laughs> He's kind of, like, throwing at Reiner. Every, every fight, somebody different has to save you. Pretended to be a reliable guy. He's, he's really uh, throwing some shade there at Reiner. <laughs> Let's not pick on people who took cannon shots to the face. That makes sense. So this person's name, like, Peak or something. Oh, wow. So Peak is Duck Face Titan. Said it's been a while since she's walked on two feet. Everybody's worried about Reiner. Well, you know, he does have that dissociative issue going on. So that's Duck Face Titan. I'm surprised she doesn't look very Duck Face in her human form. I guess people kind of said you're going to be sort of surprised when you see who the Duck Face Titan is. I don't know. I didn't have much in the way of expectations. I just wanted Duck Face Titan killed. Maybe Peek will end up being a good person and I'll regret that. Just another one of my long, long lists of regrets about wishing ill will towards people on this show. <laughs> I love this. Uh, oh, something about Mr. Braun. But uh, I love this guy's philosophy about why the sea tastes salty. I like that. It had to do with urine. Oh, wow. So the the people they defeated are going to go home to their land and talk about how awful the Eldians are. This guy gets it. That, that part, of, part of Marley using the Eldians as this sort of soldier troop is to just make the rest of the world fear the Eldians even more and have them kind of thrown back to the lower echelons of society. And, of course, Gabby really wants to get that armored titan. I wonder if uh, Reiner gets to pick his successor or someone else picks it. Because I think Gabby wants it just a little too much. I think that I like uh, Falco, you know, the one that was saving the enemy combatant. Oh, Mr. Braun is Reiner. I'm not used to people calling him Mr. Braun, but yeah, Reiner Braun. Yeah, Falco kind of worrying about Reiner's well-being. I guess Reiner knows it's getting close to time. He's going to have to pass that Titan torch. Especially with people questioning his fitness for service, you know, his mental state and such. 
Oh, oh, he's seen reflections of him and Bertolt and Annie when they were all in the warrior corps. That was so cool. Yeah, it was so cool. I love that. That was a nice little touch. And I like the way he didn't even believe his own eyes for a minute. And it looks like Duckface was kind of spying him from up on that balcony. Oh, wow. Oh, so on this train here, they're really talking up Gabby as an Eldian goddess. You know, getting too proud of yourself as an Eldian in this society could lead to you being killed or imprisoned or sent to paradise. But yeah, Colt is uh, filling his booze and he's really talking some Eldian identity pride, Eldian cultural pride, which could be dangerous talk in this Marleyan society because they really, really only need like seven Eldians, or nine at the most. But wow, they're really cheering her on to the degree that I feel like the Marleyan officials are going to try to take her out of the running altogether. And I can see Reiner is kind of liking this Falco guy. Like, like I said, if he has any input on who his successor is, I bet he's leaning towards Falco here. Oh, so I guess they get it at age 14, which means they live to 27. Unless, of course, as he says, cannons chop you up to little bits. Falco really has a good grasp on this. Oh, wow. And suddenly Reiner's a little upset with what Falco's saying. Maybe Reiner feels it all true, all too truly in his heart there. Oh, no, he's saying we could report you and you and your whole family just get turned into the regular old big dumb titans. Which, in a way, at least the big dumb titans live way longer than 13 years, right? Uh, he really got Falco scared there. Yeah, really holding that, uh, oh, I guess if you become one of the nine, you become an honorary Marleyan, it says. Interesting. So they trade, you know, a shortened life, doomed to death at 27 in exchange for this honorary Marleyan citizenship. Oh, wow. He's telling him he has to rescue Gabby from that dark future that awaits him. He does not much care for his own lot in life. I get it. Little info card about the armbands. So here we are at a train station. Whoa, this is a pretty densely populated area. Lots of houses. <laughs> I guess they're back in Liberia in behind the walls and fences. Wow, she's singing about loving it there. You know, her beloved Liberio. She's a little too rah, rah, rah for everything. I mean, even though you won the battle, it was a costly battle. A whole lot of bad stuff happened. <laughs> Poor Colt. He can't handle his booze. Oh, and there's Duckface. So the red armbands identify the nine, right? I noticed the yellow armbands are on the warrior trainees, but the red armbands are on the, the nine, or the seven, or the six, I guess they have. Because they don't have uh, Annie, right? I feel like Annie's got to show up this season, though. So Pete trying to give him a little pat on the back there, try to lift him up a little bit. Oh, I like this internal thought that uh, the young guys have in their Falco, that he wonders if Reiner wants the Eldians to be free of war, which it seems pretty clear that's what Falco wants. Wonders if he can trust Reiner, because it's got to be hard to trust anybody in this society the Marlans have built if you're an Eldian. Oh, Falco's got to go back to training. And Gabby there just kind of shooting him down. And Peek telling him to take it easy. Maybe Peek is a nice lady. Maybe that's why people were saying, don't be too quick to want Duckface dead. But still, Duckface was getting darn annoying, popping up out of nowhere, gobbling up prisoners. Like that duck that stole my sandwich. I still hold a chip on my shoulder towards ducks for that. It's part of why I don't like Duckface. And Zeke seeing his grandparents, so even though he hates his father, it's good, I guess, to see he still has some family he cares about. Though, you know, doing your mom and dad wrong like that still, still sticks in my craw. Gabby, happy to be back with her parents. So strange, just so strange to see them just walking into the geographical representation of their oppression. But at the same time, you're still happy to see your family, and it's so weird to think of how 
dedicated they are to giving everything to the Marleyan cause. And it's probably just to get a little bit better life for them and their families, but still not a real, what you might think of as a high quality life. Just a little less oppression. I think the guy's talking a little bit about uh, post-traumatic stress disorder there. And they're laughing at him. That's super cruel. Just shouting out boom and triggering the guy. Yeah, it's absolutely sort of a depiction of post-traumatic stress disorder. Oh, Falco trying to ensure this poor guy that's suffering there from that anxiety that you won't have to fight again when you get better. Oh, and Gabby just bragging about it, like a child would do. I mean, she's still a child and I don't think has fully grasped the uh, consequences of everything she's done. Bragging about running around with, you know, Gayard, the uh, jaw titan. Her family's proud of her for killing people and trying to earn her way into an early grave, you know, as one of the nine. Oh, and Reiner here just acknowledging it's almost certain that she's going to chomp him someday. Oh, is she? Is she Reiner's little sister or something? Oh my goodness. Wow. And the Eldian philosophy here, at least coming from Reiner's parents, like they blame the Eldians on the island on parody for their lot in life. Like they really seem to think if the the Eldians on parody were eliminated that they would be treated like equals or treated better. Wow. Strange, strange perception, you know, living through horrible, horrible circumstances as horrible, horrible things to your point of view. So I get it. But man, this is depicted really well. It's like subtle and not, I mean, it, it doesn't feel shoehorned in. I, I, just, I, I like the structure of this episode. I'm glad I'm slowly starting to figure a few things out. Ate somebody because it looked tasty. Oh, talking about a potato. <laughs> oh, he says they're truly beyond all help. So is he describing, oh, oh, he's describing all the people he met when he was in the scout corps. Took me a minute there to figure out who each and every were, each and every one were. But wow, like Reiner, I thought, did make a few true connections while he was there. But I guess he's broken off that whole soldier part of him and doesn't even have those feelings too much. And you know how we saw that person just recently suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder? And I think they're just showing another aspect of the kind of damage that war can do to somebody by the way he has to convince himself that he hates those people that I feel like he was friends with for a while. Like he has to lie to himself. I mean, that's the whole warrior-soldier dichotomy in his mind, the schism. Wow, and the mom there teaching Gabby that those who left us and fled to the island deserve to be punished for abandoning us? I don't know. I think they could have went with them, right? I mean, not you personally, but your ancestors. I don't know how it was picked who went and who stayed. I'm sure we'll learn more about that. Oh, so that was... Oh, he changed after coming back from the island. It's like, you know, makes me think of... The stories from Vietnam era where you hear about uh, teenagers went off to Vietnam and came back. And nobody even seemed to recognize who they were. I used to hear a lot of that growing up in the 80s. Sad. Truly sad. So I guess the uh, nine and their trainees or whatever have their pretty cozy, pretty cozy quarters to hang out in. This looks pretty nice. Sitting, enjoying some tea. And Zeke saying the same thing we heard him say with the brass before being discussed that Titans aren't the state of the art when it comes to warfare anymore. And he's pointing out that if Titans aren't valuable to Marley, then they might just, you know, get rid of all the Marleyans, just like their existence. I'm sorry, the Marleyans may get rid of all the Eldians, like their existence depends very strongly on them being valuable as weapons. Oh, what's this to tell that story? We need a narrator. Who's this Tiber family? The Warhammer Titan. I guess that's the Titan I haven't seen yet. There's one that I hadn't seen yet, and that must be the Warhammer. And they're talking about the Tibers. Oh, wow. I wonder where the Tiber family are. 
And they said it's that family that holds this uh, Warhammer Titan. That With a name like that, he's going to be pretty awesome when we see him. So the Tibers are living a wealthy life. I wonder where they went. I wonder, like, they must not be in Marley if they're living like that. Okay, I'm super curious about these Tibers now. And I really want to see what the Warhammer Titan looks like. He's got to be great. But it's interesting how the Tibers have separated themselves from the rest of this program. I guess that's why one of the nine was held back in, in reserve. And they talk about people abroad hold them in high esteem because I guess the Warhammer Titan must have been pretty darn good at winning that uh, Titan War. Oh, and he's uh, bragging about his confidence that they're going to control Parody. I don't know if that's going to happen. And it looks like somebody's spying on him. Yeah, the Marleans want to know what the Eldians talk about in their free time. Interesting. Interesting. No privacy at all. They can't speak in private at all. But this guy doesn't like something Zeke said. Not in this room. Zeke knows they're being spied on. And he doesn't like it that they know they're being spied on. Because that means they're not going to be able to effectively spy, you know? That means everything you say... Oh, wow, that training out there kind of reminds me of when uh, the cadets were training, when Annie was teaching her martial arts to, uh, well, this episode snuck up on me the end of it, but it was a good one. I needed it to slow down because that first one just went through straight on, getting a little bit of a feel for what the Eldian existence is like in Marley, much more than we got just from Grisha's flashbacks at the end of season three. It's feeling like a whole lot of this season may be taking place in Marley. Like two episodes in, we still haven't checked in on Aaron and Mikasa and Armin and, and company. So curious to see when we're finally going to get to check in with them. But like just really explaining the mindset and the experience of the Eldians here. Really followed up that action-packed episode with a little bit more nuanced episode. Letting us understand why the Eldians are in the situation that they are. Why the Nine are in the situation that they are and how they're dealing with their own, I guess, struggle in life. And then they throw out this name Warhammer Titan. You can't just throw out a name like Warhammer Titan and expect me not to be like super, super curious and eager to see this Warhammer Titan that apparently is part of the Tiber family. So I guess we're going to be seeing the Tiber soon. Anyway, just want to say I'm proud of you for watching anime and I'll talk to you again soon. I just want to give a big thank you to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. It really does mean a lot to me. If you think you might be in a position to support the channel, there is a link to the Patreon in the video description. Feel free to take a look around and see what's going on at the Bruce Leslie Anime Dad Patreon.